I removed the floors out of the Corvette and now on the water jet, I'm gonna cut brand new floors for the Corvette. Oh, dude. You see how big the hole is I had to cut? Because this, look how high that is. So we really had that motor slammed, eh? Yeah. Well, doesn't that give you a lot more clearance? Huh? There's a huge gap between the oil pan and the subframe now. Finish the steel floors in the Corvette. Driver's side is fairly simple. It's just we replaced the fiberglass and wood floors with a sheet of sheet metal that's been bead rolled. What that does is it lets you sit the seat a lot lower. On the driver's side, I did a little notch for the transmission, more room, that little plate right there. But other than that, driver's side's fairly stock. Passenger side has a bunch of tunnels and stuff for lines. But yeah, now that all this stuff is done, we can we can continue building um, more drivetrain related components and we can run water lines through this little tunnel and it'll make life a lot easier than trying to bulk pipe them and run them in the car or put them in the tunnel. This gets them out of the way of the danger zone. What do we got in the rear? Got a big bulldog. What's close? Yeah, we got the diff mounted up. We sell these diff mounts. Well, Josiah makes them and sells them. So just took them off the shelf and put them on and they, they work flawlessly. So we need a drive shaft, some axles, and then all the suspension components. It'll fair, fall together fairly quickly with all the related components. And we gotta paint all this stuff. Comment below what you want the subframe powder coated. I'm saying black. Spill a bunch of oil and dirt on it and it looks the same. Spill a bunch of oil and dirt on the gold subframe, it looks nasty. Oh shit. Look at that. Yeah, watch. We're putting jack stands in this. Basically, we it doesn't matter where you drill the first hole, what matters is where you put the second hole. So we're going to weld a 5 8 thread here on the end. That'll hold the inch and a quarter hole saw. This is an inch and a quarter tube. We're then going to weld a half inch smooth shaft on this end so we can put the drill on it. Because of how long this is, when we stick it through the hole, we're going to be able to level it and make it square very easily. Because the tube centers itself on the first hole, you don't need a drill bit to go through the second one. So we're going to do this times four and you're going to see a Corvette with a four post jack stand style like a rally car, which I used to do all the time. That's why I know how to do this. Um, not that you wouldn't know how to do it if you hadn't done it before, because it's not that hard. But then we're gonna make A-frames with uh, one inch pins. The pins are gonna be eight inches long-ish, so that they slide in nice and well beyond the frame rail. So they'll be nice inside. And uh, this car will be able to be put on four of these posts quickly, easily, safely. And we'll probably even add in like a hood pin style pin so that they aren't able to rotate either, making it way safer than jack stands. So it'll be nice and easy to look really good um, and it's safer. So it's a win, win, win.
All right, guys, now that we've drilled the holes in the chassis of the Corvette, we're going to just do a little design on some uh, jack stands, something that is repeatable, CNC produced, and can be easily made. We might even throw together a jig to fixture these and build them quickly and efficiently. What I'm excited about with this is it's gonna be nice chromoly tubing. We're gonna get the TIG welder out, we're gonna do some nice beads on it, and I used to love doing stuff like that, so probably gonna get my hands on the TIG welder and do these up, so I'm just gonna go through quickly the thought process and design essentially. So if we start from um, the stands themselves, you can see if I start from the beginning, actually I'll show you a quick overview. This is kind of the complete, so we'll go step by step on how this was created. Step one, slide this baby back. Here we go. So started with a sketch and a couple tubes, um, throwing those together using the tube function of fusion. I then needed to create some body cuts. Uh, so that's basically creating planes and cutting the bodies of the tubes to create that miter. Um, the miter is right there. So we needed to create that miter in each body so that when we send this part to the tube shop that's gonna cut these, maybe cage kits, maybe somebody else, they're gonna have the whole file. So then I'm deleting the feet off the bottom after I created a cut plane at around 10 degrees. This was another cut plane that I created um, to give the top of this tube a nice angle. The bottom cut plane again was on the same angle. So we'll remove those and you have the completed tube assembly. Um, we also have this hole passing through, which would have been created by this sketch. So this line was a cut profile, again, at 10 degrees passing through. All of this is parametric, so I can change the angle and it'll create a new cut through the tubes if I wanted to run less or more angle. But that is essentially a one inch hole through the tubes with a 50 thou clearance for welding and for cutting uh, variations. Basically, when you cut something with a laser on a tube, the kerf is not gonna be, how should I say it, perpendicular at all times. Well, it is gonna be perpendicular, but when the tubes are mounted at an angle and the cut profile, it's gonna have some oversized and undersized variation. Anyways, for the welder, 50 thou, that's 25 thou around the radius. That is absolutely nothing when it comes to welding. If anything, it's better than a, a tight fit. So moving on to the assembly stage, I actually created some parts within the assembly because I had to reference the geometry of the assembly. So starting again from the beginning, we'll take my timeline, drag that back, and then we created the base plate and you can see it has not been joint constraint yet created a joint connected it then i mounted that on a flat surface so you can see that this is at our nice mounting angle um, i then created the pin the chromoly pin that we're going to insert there then i constrained it there then i created a cap and i jointed that to the tube assembly and you now have a complete jack stand assembly that is uh, easily manufacturable. So from here, I'm probably gonna make a jig that kind of holds the tube in place, references each one of these tubes with some like V-block style holders, and then just gives us a reference for the uh, base plate to be tacked all together so that we can easily throw the tubes in, pull it off, weld it, and uh, do this process easily. So I'm gonna go on and do that. The next video will probably produce these, install them on the car, get the tubes welded into the car, and uh, see how everything goes. See if we've created the right uh, space, the right gaps from the tube that's going in the car, which is gonna be a .095 wall chromoly tube versus the one inch pin. So calculating all of the slop amounts that we want. I think it's going to be easy to install but not too sloppy that uh, it would have a lot of movement and the whole thing is going to be really strong, really safe and I'm really excited to use it because also what we want to try and do is with these pins mounted in the car we also want to create a external air jack assembly that can also slide into the pins and lift the car kind of like an auxiliary air jack to the original chassis mounted air jacks. These are gonna be the high pressure ones from New Performance, so that's gonna be really cool to design, build, and showcase. Basically, you're gonna have two 
nice, pretty low profile racks maybe hanging in the trailer. And if you want to ever jack the car up on all four quickly for something, like maybe you want to check all tires, change all tires, do a bolt check on everything. We'll see you guys on the next set of videos. I'm off to Poland and this is going to be the last round of Drift Masters where we're really gonna find out um, how much rear end damage we can take. Hopefully not too much. Try to put up a good final round for us. You guys will see that on the next video and uh, that's it.